welcome to Stephanie Morgan's channel. I am going to show you a quick way on how to run comps in NARR. So first you're going to go to the site and you're going to type in the address up here at the address bar. If it's an active listing, it'll pop up. If it's not, it'll pop up as well, but it just won't show as an active listing. Here's a Google Maps view and then you're going to scroll down. You're going to see some basic information about the property. And scroll all the way down and this this part has some really cool information like owner facts the legal description that comes in handy later tax information deed records and mortgage records okay so I just kind of do a quick scan over that and then I click on create CMA so I do find comps and typically I just like to do closed deals on this, I was learning how to find lake properties because there's not an option for lake properties. So this was a little bit complicated for me, but I just played around with it until I could come up with some reasonable comps. I'm going through, I'm kind of click, clicking some parameters. I don't want them to be too specific. I want it to be kind of broad. And I did like a 20 year range, 10 years before, 10 years after search. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it's going to show me on the map some comparables. And if I feel like that's enough comparables, then I'm going to go ahead and start scrolling through the list that it gives me. And I'm going to click on properties. And I'm like looking at the different criteria, mainly at the square footage of the home. And then I start one by one going through each comp. And I'm looking for features that really play a role in property value. On lake properties, they are around here, they're kind of all across the board. So this is a very difficult one to gauge. But one of the main things I'm gonna be looking for is um, location on the lake. Like, is it in a main channel? Is it in a cove? How much lake frontage does it have? Does it have a dock or does it not have a dock? things like that. I'm also going to be looking at different finishes. I'm looking at countertops, flooring, crown molding, not crown molding, appliances, windows, and just things that really play a role in appraisal value. And that will be in another video. So this is the sales information right here. I'm comparing how big the lot is. And basically, I'm comparing overall the stats on this home to decide whether or not if I want to use it as a comparable. This one, I decide that is it is a good comparable, okay? And then there's, here's another one. Okay, so this one's obviously on a way different lake frontage type home. Again, I'm looking at things like, is the level lot or not? So I'm making a, I'm, I'm making a mental note of, all the components of this house that are either desirable or not desirable because after I pick my comps I'm going to rate these either better or worse than my property my, than my subject property right um, age of home I mean well they're supposed to be within you know 10 years one way or the other okay is, does, is there a POA is there not is you know let's see site lot size is it brick? Is it vinyl? Has it been updated? Has it not been updated? So I'm going to go back to this apartment three and I'm going to look at the photos of it. Originally I didn't choose it because it looked like a condo and I felt like that was just too far off from what we were trying to compare to. But there's unique properties all over the place here, especially around the lake. So I cannot, because that property was sold off market, um, or because it was th actually it was sold through a different MLS than what I have access to, so I don't have access to the listing photos, I'm going to go to um, Google and I'm going to type it in and I'm going to look and see if I can find the listing photos somewhere else, Pro probably Zillow because a lot of times Realtor.com will remove the listing photos once something is sold. So I found one, but guess what? It's the wrong one. It's apartment 12, not apartment 3. 
So I'm going to go back to Google and now I'm going to look for the specific unit number, which is apartment three. There it is. Okay, so here's the old photos, um, or not the old photos, the listing photos from that condo, and this is the correct unit, number three. And I am comparing the interior to see if it's comparable to our listing. And it's fairly updated, just like our listing is, or our subject property is, I'm sorry. Uh, great flooring, vaulted ceilings, I'm looking at the light fixtures, I'm looking at... Um, you know, with the, the plumbing fixtures, I'm looking at the topography around the lake, how close is it to the lake, oh, it's got a two-car garage, or is it a carport? I decided that I'm going to go ahead and use this, even though it is a condo. Okay, so now we have a range, so we're going to click Update Valuation and Close, and now we're going to Adjust Comps. So right here is where I'm going to really study the main difference. Now, one thing to note is the smaller square footage homes versus the really high square footage homes, the smaller, the higher price per dollar in comparables that you're going to see. Like you have to, you have to make some adjustments based on how big the property is as well. So 2,000 square feet versus 2,600 square feet. I've got to make a mental note that I'm going to get a lower price per square foot on a 2,600 versus a 2,000, even if they were exactly the same, just because. You have kind of like your base price per square foot um, to that's just part of an appraisal process, which we'll go over in another video. So here I am going through and I kept all the tabs open up top. You can't see them so that I can review the property, the, the, the comp properties, just to kind of refresh my mind. And then I'm, I'm just kind of really using what I know, my knowledge base to determine, hey, is this piece of lake property, is this more desirable or less desirable? Like one sitting on a point and then one only has, you know, so much square footage of lake frontage in a cove, but one house hasn't been updated at all, whereas the other house has completely been updated. So you're gonna have to use your best judgment and go from there and just really kind of dive in and study the market. So after playing around with it, the adjustments knocked down the median by $45,000. Okay, so now this gives us a range. Okay, from and if you wanna if you wanna type in a recommended price right here whenever you're getting ready to run your report and present it to your seller or buyer, um, you can do that. Um, I typically just leave a range up there and then have a conversation with the buyer or seller. Um, well, if it's a seller, I'm gonna say how fast do you need this thing to move, you know? And I may make adjustments on listing price based on the current market and how fast it's moving. If you need the property to really move quickly, then you're gonna to want to price it com competitively on the lower side of those price ranges. Right here, you can put your client's email address in and this will send them a copy of the report. And then you're gonna click Run Report. You're gonna see this little screen pop, pop up right here. And whenever the report is done, you will get an email sent to you. And then also you will hear a little ding go off and it's going to be up there. After a couple of minutes, the report's generated. That will pop up. You'll click on it. This is what's going to be sent to your client. You can add this to the file. And right here, it's got the NAR PRs, um, current estimated value, my refined value after making adjustments to information and details about the home when I first started. And then it's gonna have the different comps that you ran and the adjustments that you made. And these reports are all very customizable. You can add more, take away. You, I mean, there's just so much information out there that you can send. But I don't wanna overwhelm my clients, so I typically just do um, a really short one. I, I uncheck all the boxes and just save this to my desktop or to the file. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them below. Also, click follow to subscribe. Thanks so much.